Hmm, why don't you feel Earth spinning? That planet of yours you're on right now is spinning at over a thousand miles per hour and yet you don't feel it. The answer is, well, you've always been spinning. Every atom and molecule that just happens to be you has been spinning along with the Earth for billions of years. But what if the Earth spun faster? Not just faster, I mean like a lot faster. Would you feel it then? What would happen? Uh, why would you want to know that? I don't know, because it's, it's fun? Well, it's fun at first. <laughs> now entering the facility. Many nerds over the years have already asked the question, what if Earth stopped spinning? And the answer to that is pretty simple. The Earth is spinning at over a thousand miles per hour at the equator, and if it suddenly stopped, it'd be like being in a car crash at a thousand miles per hour, except with everything. So today, I wanna ask the opposite question that isn't as clear. What if Earth spun faster, and faster than that, and then faster than that? It's not as clear. And importantly, it's something we can actually calculate. So let's begin by asking a third, even simpler question. Why is the Earth spinning in the first place? Stars are like my hair, large and very attractive. They are massive, almost perfectly spherical celestial bodies that pull on all the gas and dust around them for hundreds of millions of kilometers. This gravitational tugging doesn't happen equally in all directions, however, so over cosmic time, everything around the star starts to spin. And as it does, the gas and dust have innumerable tiny collisions. Sometimes they stick together. Specks become pebbles, pebbles rocks, rocks planetesimals, and eventually planets. Planets spin up and maintain imparted stellar rotation as they form because, like a figure skater pulling in her arms to spin faster, more mass pulling closer to a spinning object speeds that object up. The Earth and every planet in the solar system is then spinning today because the Sun was, billions of years ago. As we said, today the Earth is spinning pretty fast, over 1600 kilometers per hour at the equator. Even so, you don't feel the Earth spinning, and the Earth doesn't spin beneath your feet when you jump, because everything, every atom of your body has always been spinning, pinned to the Earth loosely by gravity. So things only get weird once that velocity of Earth increases, and we can actually calculate when the weirdest point of all, we can calculate when the weirdest of all that weirdness happens with, um, <clears throat> with numbers and, and math and, are you, can you, can you pause my feed for a second? I think I'm, I think I'm going to spew? The main force everything on Earth will feel if it speeds up one, two, or ten times is called a centrifugal force, apparently acting outwards from the center of rotation. And these centrifugal forces will be in direct opposition to what's keeping you on the ground right now, gravity. If we set them equal to each other, therefore, we can mathematically determine when Earth is spinning so fast that everything on its surface becomes weightless and flies off into space. To find the point where these forces cancel out, what we're gonna do is set your weight force equal to the centrifugal force, substitute in known relationships for those forces, and then look up the radius of Earth and the gravitational acceleration on Earth in the correct units. Now, this is a very simple equation. And I believe in you. I believe that you can solve for V and find the velocity at which gravity gets negated on the surface of Earth. It's gonna be one of these three numbers. Grab a calculator, give it a try. Like I said, I believe in you. Pause the video now if you have to. And Aria, can you pause my feed too? Cause, um, uh, sick as a dog now. Give it a try. And now, a moment of science. Now I know that earlier some of you were triggered when we said the word centrifugal force, and that's because you learned in school that these are fictitious or fake forces. So Kyle, why are we using them? Well, we only call them fake forces because they actually don't exist in certain reference frames. For example, if I make a turn in my car right now, I would say I'm experiencing a force pushing me to the outside of that turn. But from an outside perspective, 
of course you see no force pushing on me at all. From an outside perspective, it just looks like my inertia wants to continue forward in a straight line as it always does and the car is getting in the way. So from an inertial frame of reference, there is no centrifugal force, but it is still useful if everything is in a spinning reference frame like we are doing today. Watch where you're going, you absolute mollusk! Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey there gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and Hollywood Boulevard Thor, Kyle Hill. You know, when I'm not sciencing, I'm trying to live my very best life. No, that doesn't just mean eating right and working out, but means acknowledging and taking care of the only muscle in your body that really matters. This one right here. Your brain is not a muscle. Shh, get help that is better. BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, Get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with your expert therapist. Log on to your account anytime to send the messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room. Don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area. Don't pay any more than you have to because you get access to financial aid. If you want to start living your very best life, if you want to start achieving your brain goals, try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill for 10% off your first month. Look, I can't say it's for everyone, but it could be for you. Get help that is better. Better help. So, what value did you get? The correct answer is A, almost 18,000 miles or 28,000 kilometers per hour. At this spin velocity, if Earth was spinning 10 times faster, you'd see a sunrise every 90 minutes. Everything on Earth would seem to uncouple from the ground. High-fiving your friend could accidentally send her into the upper atmosphere. The world's oceans would begin to pool around the equator as it spun faster and faster. Water might start reverse raining into space. But all of this weirdness actually happens well before our calculated value. Any small increase in Earth's spin, even one kilometer per hour, will change the length of the day, increase the water level at the equator, and desynchronize communication satellites if they have no fuel to compensate. As Withhold Fraxek, an analyst at ESRI, told Popular Science in 2017, if the Earth spun 10 times faster than this, days would be two hours shorter, leading to the mega suck that is permanent daylight savings time. 10 times faster than this, and hundreds of feet of water are pulled from the poles to the equator, wiping out hundreds of millions of people and turning many countries into Atlantis. Finally, at our calculated value, gravity on Earth is like a celebrity after someone finds a tweet of theirs from 10 years ago. Canceled. And you're in imminent danger of spacing yourself and everything around you. That is, if, if uh, you're still alive after all the flooding, stronger storms, and um, earthquakes. Of course, all this catastrophe only happens if Earth spins up all at once. If it were to happen over hundreds of millions of years, society and biology could probably adapt to it. And the only known way for Earth to spin up all at once would be for it to get absolutely domed by another planet-sized object. It's actually happened before in your planet's history when the moon was created. And if that were to happen, I wouldn't worry about all the craziness we talked about today because you'd either be um, vaporized or magma skeleton. So either way, I would not worry about a planet suddenly spinning up. Administrator, the facility's planet centrifuge 5000 is almost complete. Sha, sha. They don't need to know ab un until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to join our members only Discord, see videos early, see bloopy bloops, get live streams that no one else gets, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name in every single episode. How about that? And there's already hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you. I don't know how I'm going to pass it. Now, some of you nerds, in the comments below might be thinking what I'm about to say, but all this catastrophe I'm mentioning about the Earth spinning up and what would happen specifically at the equator, you know, like everyone drowning, this effect happens the most at the equator and then tapers off 
at the poles of Earth, right? If you were thinking about spinning around on the outside of an object, if you're actually on the axes of that spin, the north and south spin poles, then you would, have, you would get no change in your apparent weight or anything like that. So humanity would have to migrate to the poles in some sort of cool sci-fi books to, I'm writing it down, can't steal it, it's public now. What? Thanks for watching, it's probably already a book. Anyway.